Warning, this episode of Seriously Wrong is a learning adventure that can be enjoyed by parents and their adult children alike. Welcome back again to the Seriously Wrong podcast, the most exciting podcast in the world. It's the only podcast that sends inverted sound waves into your ear to repair scar damage on your eardrum. And that's a guarantee. I'm one of the co-hosts, Aaron. And I'm one of the co-hosts, Sean. I mean, everyone calls me ears for short. And they call Aaron the listener. Yeah, because you got the ears, but I got the the listening skills. Listening skills, which is different. Which uh, actually segues right into the topic of this episode, which is the human ear. Yes, it's been a popular request for a long time. We get this request probably once a week. Yeah, emails pouring in, pouring in. Hey, I requested this a year ago. You said you'd do it, but you haven't. And for me, it's frustrating because I've been wanting to do the ear since pretty much yeah week, I got week two we put one. up my hand and say hey this has been me I just he's been I holding know, it I up I just don't want to talk about the ear that much I'm insecure about the way my ears look to be oh, honest stop. with you they look great no nah, they they're kind great. of deformed they're, they're not barely the bottom half is way bigger than the top the danglies are too dangly on one of the ridges there's like a little melded point that's, that's so imperfect no offense but frankly that's stupid your ears look great And this whole cultural fear around having less than perfect ears is just messed up in the first place. I think every ear is beautiful. And we've been getting hundreds and hundreds of requests. And yeah, we're doing doing the episode. We're We're doing doing the episode. And to begin the episode, we're actually going to shrink ourselves down and travel into our intern Jeffrey's ear. So we can get an inside look, an up close look and learn really the dynamics of how this works. So Jeffrey, roll the theme song. Jeff, theme song. Jeffrey, uh, it's really, I mean, it's, it's one of the few few things you got to do around here is, yeah. is hit the theme song when we tell you to. And this delay, I mean, it's not funny. It's not cute. I don't know. I just, I'm getting sick of this. Maybe yeah. I'll just, yeah, I'll just, you do, just it. do it. Yeah, you just do it. All right, and now it's. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, to, let's do to, it. Uh, shrink down. I got the uh, shrink button right here. I press this button, and you and I will both shrink and move through the air into Jeffrey's ear. It's one button does it all. Great little machine we got. This is a great little machine. It really allows us to go on learning adventures. One of my favorite things to do is learning adventures. Hard to think of much that's better. So let's hit the button. Here we go. Ooh. I love being shrunken down. It Uh, feels so good. It makes me tingle. Yeah, I'm really tiny. It feels weird Mm. to be tiny, but good. So like we're just right at the ridge. Let's uh, walk down into the ear cavity here. Hello. 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 This is cool. It's kind of filthy. Yeah, it's ear waxes. It's a lot of it. It's like walking through sticky mud. They're gross up close. Yeah, why didn't he like trim these ear hairs? When it gets to this point, Jeffrey, you gotta trim it. Yeah, he's not an old man, but like... This is an old man amount of hair Yeah, yeah, yeah. Filthy. It's a lot of dirt, too. Like, does he never run some water in his ears in the shower? Like, I was hoping to get to the drum and everything. Yeah, maybe... I gotta pull the plug on this. This is disgusting. Yeah, let's get out of here. I'm sure you can hear what we're saying. So, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Press the button. Press the button to pull us back out. Bring us back up to regular size. Yeah. We're done. We're done Jeffrey. now, Jeffrey. Oh, God. I don't know if he can't hear us or if he is hearing yeah. us and it's just his thing. This, it's frustrating. This, this, this thing that he does. Jeffrey. 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 And we're not, we don't ask a lot of you, Jeffrey, but just please hit the button. What yeah. is he doing? <sighs> I feel like I'm going to cry, man. I don't Dude, know how okay. we're going to we'll get out of here. We'll, fi- we'll find some way out. I've never we'll seen find this kid out. hit a button. Will the wrong boys get out of their intern's ear? Will Sean break down and cry in front of Aaron, who he tries to be strong for? And does the shrinking mechanism of the machine shrink all of the cells in their body or remove cells or the space between them? Find out next time, later in the episode, on Wrong Boys Learning Time, Magical Chimes. One way that you can think of ears, and specifically your ears, is ears are like 
weird hearing slash balance gills with chunks of jawbone in them. The current evolutionary theory on where ears came from is that there was a type of aquatic species that's kind of between a fish and mammals or at the evolutionary point where fish started to become mammals, started adapting just before they're able to go on land called Pandorichthys, which was an underwater creature that had gills near the back of its head that were used to breathe out of water. So it would like get the tip of its head out of water and then its breathing gills slowly over time became more and more focused on sensing vibrations and pressure differences and eventually lost the ability to breathe. Although there is still internal tubing that connects your ears to the back of your throat, which is why you can do that thing where you like plug your nose and pop your ears on an airplane when you have right, that right, pressure you... difference. Additionally, the little pieces of bone that are in the ear that are involved in the process of hearing are evolutionarily connected to the tops of jaw bones in these transitionary evolutionary species called synapsids, mammal-like reptiles. It's like the very origin of the mammalian chain of evolution. One factoid I found reading about this was that snakes actually pick up sound vibrations, sense sound vibrations using their jaw bones. That chunk of the top of the jaw bone that was most sensitive to vibrations in other species through evolutionary divergence over time, moved up and away from the jawbone into a certain place within the inner ear in humans. Right. But you can still, you can kind of connect, like the top of your jawbone is pretty close to your inner ear. Right. Here's how an ear works today in humans. Let's talk about the modern ear. You got this like cup thing or like a satellite dish almost shaped thing to catch the vibrations, sends them down in through a tube. The sound vibrations of the air hit an eardrum and the eardrum moves against these bones, these three tiny little bones, uh, smallest bones in the body, quick movements that which amplify the vibrations hit the cochlea, which is a sort of like spiral shaped, it looks like a snail shell almost, that's filled with a liquid and is also lined with tiny little things called hair cells or stereocilia. And those hair cells, the ones at the wide end of the spiral will catch high frequency sounds and the ones at the low end catch low frequency sounds and they kind of move against this membrane which opens and closes electronic pathways and sends an electronic signal into your brain and your brain is like ooh, sound and somehow that becomes the experience of sound so yeah when we experience sound when we experience music the voice of our mother when we hear a tiger sneaking up on us all these different things to simplify it vibrations in the air hit your eardrum which rustles some tiny bones which makes the fluid shake up inside your little snail shell which touches hairs and those little hairs send signals to your brain that your brain interprets with meaning to say oh that's the sound of an airplane that's the sound of my lover that's the sound of this that's the sound of that i keep thinking of you know those things in like old timey pictures where someone will put like it's like a thing in their ear and then it's like a big horn on the other end to like amplify their hearing ability have you ever done the thing where you, you cut your hand around your ear and notice yeah, the yeah, world yeah, is yeah. more li like if you artificially extend your ears by cupping behind them you actually extend your ability to hear like you can just yeah. it's immediately louder yeah you sound louder when i do it towards you and it blocks out some of this room sound like because i'm pointing at you with the ears so i guess evolutionarily like on the transition from gills to these cup ears on the side of our head there was an evolutionary feedback loop where there was an advantage to have more cup like ears yeah it starts with just like a little hole and then it's like some of them had a little bit of a mound around the hole and they could hear a bit better and like yeah over billions of years it becomes this these weird flappy thingies we got on vibration our catching satellite dish gills with tiny chunks of <laughs> <laughs> tiny chunks of jawbone in them Simple. And uh, yeah, and the other thing very quickly that ears do, the other function that they have is helping you keep your balance. You put it earlier when we were talking about this, the accelerometer of your body. So above the cochlea, there's three uh, semicircular ducts, also filled with little hairs, also filled with liquid. And when you move, that liquid sloshes around, moves the hairs and helps you orient yourself and know where to step or how to keep your balance. Or like if you start falling over, the reason your body knows right away to step out behind you and like sort of catch yourself before you fall over is because of this accelerometer in your ear that is directly connected into your nervous system 
and like being dizzy is when you're you're spinning around or moving and you stop moving and the liquid keeps moving for a little bit and so you're getting mixed signals between what you're seeing which is oh i'm stationary now and what you're feeling which is oh i'm still spinning because the things in my ears are still moving the little hair cells are still getting movement signals and it's disorienting mm-hmm. and, and what's really interesting is it's the same mechanism of tubes with liquid and little hairs that sends presumably very similar signals that are interpreted differently by the brain. Yeah, Um, the brain knows one is for balance and one is the experience of hearing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) fascinating it's it's, it's, it's weird <laughs> yeah no I and know. then the, in the evolutionary context of a weird shaped satellite gill with tiny chunks of jawbone in it it doesn't get much better than that folks <laughs> <laughs> this episode of the seriously wrong podcast is brought to you by van gogh's missing ear i'm here today with mr van gogh and you know there's just one question on everybody's mind which is why did you cut your ear off well thank you for asking I was in a delusional mania, Ooh. and I don't remember doing it. And it might have been either triggered by a fight with another artist, uh, but possibly also influenced by my uh, sibling getting married, which made me worried I wasn't going to get my allowance anymore. I was a poor artist. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. But I totally afterwards had no memory of doing it. Yeah, that's... Uh terrifying well thank you so much for coming on the show and this episode of seriously wrong was brought to you by his mr van gogh's missing ear if you find the ear please return it to my estate welcome back to a hard questions tiny segment aaron how do you feel about the morality of piercing baby's ears is it i don't baby's know body it... baby's choice yeah i think probably or parents choice baby's body like philosophically i have to say it's baby body's baby's choice but i just actually don't care is it immoral to decorate your baby well no you decorate them with clothes yeah well what about tattoo on a baby yeah see that's a no but like i feel like ear piercing is basically reversible or you have like a little dimple and it doesn't matter what if it's a cultural tattoo on a baby (laughs) i don't know we'll answer that next time that's, that's a hard questions, <laughs> tiny segment. Hearing is this unique sense in that it's kind of everywhere. It surrounds you at all times. And there was this doctor during World War II who worked with veterans and he came up with this sort of system of four different levels of hearing. And this is an experiential thing, not necessarily a physiological thing or neurological thing or anything. He described like having full hearing as a feeling of oneness with the active environment around you. And these are the four ways in which hearing does that. The first is the warning level of hearing. So like the shock you feel when you hear a loud sound, a gunshot, a siren, something that's alerting you danger is coming. Loud sound, scary, uh, alert. Or if you're like in a spooky hotel by yourself and you hear the creaking floorboards and you're on high alert and you're like, oh, the ghost stepped on the floorboard. It made a creak. <laughs> or you, you don't think about it logically. It's just like, a ah, uh, uh, there's noises in this haunted place. I'm yeah. spooked. Yeah, yeah. That one might also fit in to what he called the second level, the primitive level, which is any noises that evoke emotional reaction, like a laughing child will make you feel happy, creaking floorboards make you feel scared. Even someone's eating too loud and it just fucking annoys you (laughs) and you get this anxiety and you want to punch them. Like that was part of what he was calling the primitive level of hearing. The third level is the symbolic level, which is what you are all doing right now is listening to us talk and you're hearing these vibrations and these vibrations are being converted into words and words are associated things in your head. And that chain of symbology allows you to understand the thoughts that we're trying to express. It's really interesting because we're thinking symbols and then that's being parsed by our brains and bodies to vibrate our vocal cords, which is sending a vibration into a microphone which is then creating binary zeros and ones in data encoded as like this mp3 format and then your computer's reading it or your phone is reading it 
and then putting it in output through speakers or headphones, vibrating your tiny drum, shaking up those little bones, shaking up the little spiral full of water and hair, turning it back again into electric signal. Every step of the way, there's all these different electric signal transfers where it fundamentally changes its structure. I'm transferring symbols to your head and meanings to your head through this series of electronic vibrations. It's, it's just fucking crazy when you try to think of it all at once. And then the fourth and final level was the aesthetic level, which was noises that give you pleasure, such as enjoying music or the sound of bird song at dawn. Those were the two examples I gave. <laughs> <laughs> but just the beauty of some sounds is the fourth level of hearing. And he would notice that different people who had experienced hearing loss, like they might lose one of these more than the other ones, or they might be better at one of them still than like worse at the other three. And it wasn't always even and there no progression or anything, but that these four categories kind of existed and that hearing loss affected people in different ways. I just find it interesting to like break down experience into these different categories because it helps you to notice them. Like hearing does do all these separate things and by naming them and like creating these little systems, it helps you think about it more clearly and appreciate it more. It's kind of interesting. It can do more than one of them at once or at, like fairly concurrently that you can have music playing in the background and appreciate the melody of the music or like all the musical changes within it are pleasing to me at the same time of having a conversation with someone interpreting their symbols mm -hmm. or even just like interpreting the symbols of lyrics of someone singing over it it's like oh like both the thoughts being expressed here and the sound of the music enhance each other and the experience something i recall also about symbol interpretation by the brain is Although our brain can do a lot of simultaneous things at once, like recognize someone's face at the same time you're listening to music, your brain can't process more than one string of symbols at once. They interrupt each other. That's why like, you can listen to a podcast while you're playing video games, but you can't listen to a podcast while you're reading a book because the symbols conflict with each other. Right, right. But your ear itself is capable of hearing both the raw data that creates the symbols and the raw data that creates music at the same time. So within your ear, you can do multiple things. But then this incredible part of our brain that allows us to do complex math and count beyond the number three can only do one thing at once. Well, because like the ear is always sending signals to your brain, even while you're sleeping. And we all have the experience of there being a sound in the background, you're in a crowded room and you can just focus in on one part of the hearing. So like the ear doesn't discriminate at all. The ear just brings in the soundscape around you, no matter what it is. And it's your brain that can then parse that out and be like, I'm listening to this person talking in a room full of different people having different conversations, or I'm ignoring the buzzing sound of the air conditioner and just focusing on this music that's playing or like the mass undifferentiated waves of sound coming in get sent to your brain and your brain has all these amazing mechanisms for sorting it out. We were talking about where there's multiple strains of information coming in at once. So like if me and you were having a conversation and then people are having conversations right next to us and my brain is doing the, the work under the surface of tuning out this other conversation. But at the same time, if someone in that conversation says my name, that might register as like an alert yeah, that like yeah, they're talking right. about me. And then that would draw my attention to their conversation and would actually also disrupt our conversation because we can only have one train of symbols going through our, our brain at once. Yeah, or even if they just said something like shocking or interesting, if they were just like, I shot my dad in the face or something. Like, I don't know, it's a silly mm -hmm. example, but like... I'm one just, of those guys who likes Hitler in 2017. It's yeah, like, it's like, wait, what, did you hear that? You both like kind of like... <laughs> when they were talking about water bottles a minute ago, I would just barely even notice. But now that he mentioned how much he loves Hitler... <laughs> all of a sudden my brain was like, oh no, important thing. Yeah, <laughs> like, this seems relevant. You, yeah. You're at a party with this guy. Yes, you guessed it. Once again, it is time to announce the Seriously Wrong Most Sensitive Hearing of the Year Award. And uh, I gotta say, now for 2017, it was a tight race. Well, maybe not that tight, but once again, as has happened every year since we started this, the winner is the Greater Wax Moth. Again, a round of applause. I'll give them a hand, everyone. Uh, Thank so, you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That's too kind. Yeah, so Mr. Wax Moth, how do, you, how do you feel having won the award? I'm exhilarated. It's a small, kind of obscure species of moth. I don't get a lot of attention, don't get a lot of awards, but this time of year, 
Yeah, I get the award. <laughs> More sensitive uh, hearing. I Thank hear you. you. I don't care about you most of the year, but these weeks, I know. Every, once a year, I just love it. Is there anyone you want to thank? Your mom or... Yeah, well, I want to thank my mom. I want to thank all of my ancestry back to, you know, can I say unicellular organisms? I want to thank all the way back. <laughs> sure, yeah, it, yeah. They all played a hand. And also, obviously, I got to thank bats, which are a predator to me. So we've got, there's a bit of tension there, but it's actually the bat's extremely sensitive hearing that pushed my species to evolve even more sensitive hearing so we could talk to each other without the bat's hearing. So I got to thank bats. For, you've been a great foil. I also want to thank the University of Strathclyde for discovering how sensitive my hearing was in 2013. You made a huge difference. And I also want to thank God, the God of all moths. It's very private, but I have a strong kind of relationship with God. And uh, what are you going to do now? I mean, now that you've won, now uh, how do things change for you? What's uh, what's this year got in store for the greater Wax Moth? You know, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to stay in my native uh, Europe and, and neighboring Eurasia. And of course, my larvae are going to feed on honeycomb like we do and less commonly figs. Occasionally we'll have a fig. And yeah, just avoid being eaten by bats and just keep using my full incredible 300 kilohertz spectrum of hearing, which I mean, for context, a dolphin is 160 kilohertz. So yeah, yeah, I'd say I'm a serious <laughs> hearer. That's great. That's just great. Well, that is it for the awards, everyone. Thank you for the moth coming and uh, thank you. Well, thanks for the, the award. show. Well, 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 to, now uh, it's back to the show. Thank you. We now go live to the middle ear of an adult son. Ah, another lovely day in the tympanic cavity. I couldn't agree more, Inkis. What a beautiful day to be part of a team and help to pass on vibrations from the drum to the cochlea. It's lit. You always know I appreciate it. <laughs> we appreciate you too, cochlea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, cochlea. You always crack me up. Say, what do you think we're going to get to hear today? I hope we get to hear like a dog or something. I love the sound of popcorn popping. That's just my favorite. Stapes, what do you like hearing? You've been quiet all day. Well, I guess I, I like... Uh, Laughter. I don't know. It's, it's a good point, I guess. Yeah, it, I mean, laughter is good, but... Oh, wait, it, here's something, something comes. Coming. Here's something comes. Whoa. Whoa. Cochlea, what was that? That was the sound of an engine starting. Neato. Cool. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. Hey, Stapes, why are you being so quiet over there? He's being kind of a downer. downer. Turd. Yeah. Oh, here comes something. Stapes, get ready. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, Stapes, that wasn't so bad, was it? What was that, Cochlea? That was the sound of music coming through a car stereo. Oh, cool. Cool. That's I great. I love music. Oh, that's man, awesome. That's so Stapes, good. what do you think? Don't you think there might be more to life than passing on vibrations from an eardrum to a cochlea? I'm not really following what you're no? saying. More to life. We sit here day in and day out, even functioning when he's asleep. Is this any way to live our life? Is it yeah. just this? Yeah, I think this is great. Couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, you're acting kind of fucking weird, Stapes. Yeah, I mean, among us ossicles, Stapes has always kind of been the weirdo yeah. odd man out. This tympatic <laughs> cavity seems really small sometimes, is all I'm saying, <laughs> with you in here. Well, that's one thing, dear Incus, that we do agree on. This tympatic cavity is far too small for us. There's a better world possible, and it's on the other side of that drum. It's dangerous thoughts. The things you're saying are dangerous, and you should really just no. Pull, on the other side of that drum, we got to make a break for it, man. We can't be here anymore. This, this world is isn't crazy, enough Tom. for us. I'm not listening to this anymore. You just stop. Oh my God, what is he doing? I'm out. He's I'm done with this. Stapes is detaching himself it's from starting me. a new I, life. Oh, that hurts, Stapes. We. He just popped out the eardrum. So long, suckers, you blue pill motherfuckers. Stapes, no, come back. We need you. No, we're not blue pill, Stapes. Come back. You might think you're being revolutionary, but you're actually just being highly fucking destructive. blue pill fucking shitheads. What do they think they are? That is fucking so fucked. Fanatic. Yeah, fucking Jesus. Like, Coakley, what, what, what do you think do? of that? I'm at a loss for words, boys. This is just unprecedented. I knew he was dealing with some stuff, but that was yeah. fucking uncalled for. Uh, maybe we could have done more. Maybe if we'd listened to him better but it's too late now oh man here's something coming comes. in whoa <laughs> what was it what was it cochlea i uh, didn't feel anything ah oh, man without stapes stapes is the one that touched cochlea and now our existence is meaningless oh my god it's the worst thing that's ever happened to me oh this god. is a fate worse than death 
Stapes really fucked us. Yeah. Fucking fuck Stapes. Stapes, what the fuck does he think he's doing? Yeah, it's so fucking That's selfish. Fucked. Just like, oh, I have my own purpose outside Where's he the air go? Drum. Well, it doesn't even make any sense. Yeah. Fuck Stapes. Fuck Stapes. You know, boys, I don't like to swear, but I got to agree. That Stapes is a little stupid asshole. And then he's framing it in terms of this blue pill shit. That's oh. just adding insult to injury. <laughs> you know, I don't even like The Matrix. I know people say it's a great movie or whatever, but I don't know. It's so weird that it affected Stapes so deeply that he kept that metaphor. I liked the movie, but I don't agree with Stapes' interpretation of it. Well, that sounds like a good middle ground because I kind of did like the movie. Yeah, I know it's an unpopular opinion. I hope you guys don't hate me for not liking it. I just, I just don't. No, no, it's cool, man. Thank you. And the moral of the story is, there is no greater joy than serving your purpose. And any deviation from that is a malformed type of antisocial behavior. The end. The difference between the structure of the ear and what the ear's doing and how it's being interpreted to the brain kind of reminds me of when I was reading about hearing loss and the different types of hearing loss. And so there's two main types of hearing loss. There's kind of three. The two main types are conductive hearing loss. So that's if there's something wrong with, say, like you have a scarred eardrum or a broken eardrum, or you've got a plugged ear canal, like you've got... Something stopping the vibrations from getting to the bones. Exactly, yeah. And then there's also sensorineural hearing loss, which is when the problem is actually with the cochlea or the nerves. So the vibrations are making it into your ear as normal. And But for some reason, either the hairs or something like that, there's some disruption in the signal at that point, or your brain's just not filtering out the right. Or yeah, processing the data properly to turn it into sound. Yeah. And the the third type of hearing loss is just mixed, which is, I think, also the most common where you have some combination between these factors, like a plugged up ear, but then also your your brain isn't interpreting audio at its highest potential. And actually, interestingly, hearing loss that is sensorineural It's commonly caused by old age, but can also be caused by loud noises. The thing that's damaging about being around loud noises usually isn't damage to your eardrum, but is damage to the cochlea. It's damage to the little hairs. One thing I read was that the number one cause of hearing loss is exposure to excessively loud sounds and that you can get permanent damage from even single incidents of extremely loud sounds like being near an explosion or shotgun blast without proper hearing protection. Something like a nightclub or a movie where part of the movie is really, really loud because there's planes or whatever and it's part of the experience. At around 100 or 105 decibels, 15 minutes of that can cause permanent hearing loss. But even something as low as 80 or 90 decibels, so that's around the territory of being on a busy street with uh, large cars driving next to you, being at a lawnmower, using hand drills, that can cause permanent hearing loss over a period of a couple hours. So how exactly damaging it is to your ears is a combination of its severity and then also its length. So something that's really, really loud can cause damage in a short period of time. Something like having your MP3 player turned up all the way or being at a concert, that can cause hearing loss within 15 minutes. Yeah. Like permanent hearing loss. I think I've probably had some hearing loss from headphones. I turn my headphones up past the this isn't safe thing like all the time. <laughs> like like if the like if I'm at the safe level, I'm like, this is too quiet. I can't enjoy the music. It's not like overtaking me enough. Yeah, I'd be curious where I'm currently at as far as hearing hearing loss, humans can naturally hear a spectrum of 20 kilohertz. But as you age, you tend to reduce that down to 12 or 15 kilohertz. For context, dolphins that do echolocation, they have 160 kilohertz of range. Hmm. So we're already kind of stunted in, in hearing ability compared to a lot of other animals in the animal kingdom. Yeah, But our capacity to hear over our lifetime is almost halved naturally just from the natural experience of being around loud noises and i found some some tips on how to prevent hearing loss because i mean it sucks to not be able to hear music or hear other people talk like that's kind of annoying the number one way to prevent hearing loss is just to wear earplugs in general like (laughs) go about (laughs) your life (laughs) yeah wearing earplugs and specifically if you're like going to a loud concert put in earplugs, you can actually still hear the music and you won't have any permanent hearing loss or you'll have significantly less permanent hearing loss. Another thing that I wouldn't have thought of, but it makes sense, is that if your ears are having a loud experience, give your ears a break between those loud experiences. So like if you go to a loud concert, wear earplugs when you go to sleep that night and give your 
little vibrating hairs a chance to rest. Um, and I, the specific recommendation I saw was that if you went to a concert for two hours, you should give your ears 16 hours of quiet after that. Oh, wow. Turn down your TV, your radio, your computer, turn down everything. Have it be slightly quieter than you feel like you should. Mm -hmm. Try to get used to it being a little quieter. It's recommended to use noise canceling headphones instead of having the audio compete with the audio outside. Try to shut out as much of the audio outside as possible so you can keep the volume lower. Noise canceling headphones are super interesting in that how they work is by listening to what's going on around you and producing a sort of counter wave that is to nullify the waves of the sound outside. So it actually is making more sound in a sense but like since waves can cancel each other out if the peaks and the valleys cross over each other you can actually cancel out sound by producing more sound another thing is that if your workplace is loud and you're going to consistently be around loud noises it is recommended that you don't just tolerate that you talk to your boss you talk to human resources about getting earplugs because there's actually usually legal limitations on how much loud noise your boss can subject you to. And it's not worth it. It's not worth sustaining permanent hearing loss for whatever wage they're giving you in a place that's going to be loud. Well-paying jobs don't tend to be very loud places. Low-paying jobs have a tendency to be more loud. So if you're in a place that is more loud, chances are you're being exploited already without the permanent hearing loss. So look into getting earplugs at work. And this, I mean, this is totally a lame hearing doctor thing to suggest, but they call it the 60-60 rule, which is that don't put your MP3 player up above 60% and don't listen for more than 60 minutes. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so do the opposite of that all the time. It's a way to stay safe. Right. <laughs> but yeah, no, it sounds very lame. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm going to turn it up all the way and listen for hours on end. Hmm, what you going to do about it, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> By the way, see you in 30 years when I'm paying you for services related to my permanent <laughs> hearing loss. <laughs> That's the problem with big ear, man, is they don't really <laughs> want to protect us from permanent hearing loss because they profit off of it. Think about it. This whole 60-60 rule, it's a Trojan horse, man. Well, I've never heard of it until now. I think it's probably a good rule of thumb, but I'm not going to listen to it. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm just plain not. I'm going to go deaf instead. Well, maybe they'll fix this. We'll get some uh, transhumanist ear shit going on. Yeah, tiny robot bones. Fuck yeah. Robot bones, robot hairs. Oh, yeah. Cochlea won't know what it was replaced with. <laughs> we now go back to Inside the Ear Canal of Jeffrey the Incompetent Intern. The wrong boys struggling to survive. Do you know what day it is, man? It's day 10. What do you think he's doing out there? Is he just like going about his life, not wondering where we are? Yeah, or... I think he just walked away and straight up forgot we were inside his ear. At least we made these chairs out of like intern, earwax. Man. They're kind of nice. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Like, it's a good earwax chair. It's comfortable. But Jesus Christ, we're, it's earwax chairs. We're inside of incompetent yeah. guy's ear. I know. I know. I hear you. I hear you. I'm listening. No one's going to hit that button. I hear you and I'm listening. They're going to declare us dead. But if we never get out of here, which seems, I agree with you, likelier and likelier as days pass, yeah. make the best out of it, you know? If our families <sighs> think we're dead, they'll get over it. There's lots of earwax here to eat. It's disgusting, dude. It's, it's an disgusting. acquired taste. But once you start to appreciate the differences his diet caused, it's like... <sighs> I'm just saying, yes, it's sad. I'm sad I'm never going to see my family again, but... Mm, yeah, you know. there's so many people I'm never going to see, man. This, is, this isn't how it was supposed to go, Yeah, dude. I mean, well... We're going to be tiny skeletons inside this fucking idiot's ear. The end comes for everyone. Whether we're in an ear or we're buried underground with our loved ones surrounding us one last time, does it really make a difference in the long run? Jeffrey! Jeffrey! <sighs> He's with the yelling again. I loathe you, Jeffrey! You make me sick! You ruined... Everything. Hit the button. Oh God. Okay. Hit you know, the, dude. Hit I mean, the button. he may have ruined our lives, but if we're gonna be oh. stuck in here forever, do you want it to be bearable or unbearable? Right now, you're making it unfucking bearable. Can you stop crying? Oh. oh my God. We'll plant a garden. We'll figure it out. You know. Jeez. Why are you such a downer? I try to be strong for you, Aaron. I really do. But this is fucked, dude. I agree. Be... It's fucked. Face it. Come on. You know, life is fucked. That's what the Buddhists say. Life is fucked. I mean, the way that we face it is start from where we are and create what we want. So, I mean, let's build a new society together. Starting right here. You and me with these chairs and this earwax. 
All oh, right. It's either that or just give up and All lay right. down. Yeah. 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 So you're with me? I'm with, I'm with you. We're gonna I... we're gonna build this thing. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. one last cry and then it's all done. No more crying because it's annoying. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to stop. You know, the first thing we could do would be to like build a little house and then when you're crying, you could go outside of the house and I wouldn't have to listen to you. I love that idea. That's a cute idea. Oh, so at first I thought you said build a little house for me to cry in. Maybe that could be the second house. We'll build a second house for you to cry in. But first we need a house for me while you're crying. I love it. I love it. It's a great idea. Or we'll just have a house with two rooms. Scott, I we're being silly. Every I'm being selfish. aspect of human life. Well, we're going to get it back. No, we're not. Will the wrong boys get every aspect of human life back? In what meaningful way can two tiny men in an ear, quote, start a new society? And what's going on with Jeffrey? Find out next time on Wrong Boys Learning Adventure Magic Chimes. So we've been talking a lot about the mechanics of hearing, which is a biological thing that happens. But I also wanted to talk about listening, which is actually like a social relationship between individuals that's mediated by hearing. It's mediated by the ear, but it's social in itself. It's about meaning rather than signal. It's about... Yeah, one definition I found for listening was making meaning from sound. So it's a cognitive process that requires attention and thought. So... Yeah, it's it's social in the sense that usually when you're listening, you're listening to someone talk. Or if you're not listening, you're not listening to them talk. But it also kind of works with music or like other things. Like you're either paying attention to the sounds and if there is meaning encoded in the sounds, making the cognitive effort to decode the meaning and to, to in- integrate it into your brain or you're not. And that's listening versus not listening while you're kind of always hearing. As we said, the ear's always on. Mm-hmm. But listening is something that takes a bit of effort. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's been times in my life where I've had trouble listening. I was a fidgety child, and so often teachers would be on my case for not listening or only hearing what I could repeat what they said, but I wasn't really paying attention, mm-hmm. which made them more angry that I could repeat what they said. Right, right. Because they were trying to you, show trying me to up. Gotcha, and, you. Yeah, but I <laughs> double gotcha them. Yeah. <laughs> because the thing I was distracted with was, say, like drawing or something that used a different part of my brain that I could receive their signal while at the same time focusing on my own tiny world. But then also, like in interpersonal relationships, the need to listen in romantic relationships is sometimes really important and a failure to do that can uh, be really damaging, which I have some experience with personally yeah, um, <laughs> um, on both ends. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, a way to be a better listener, just think less about what you're going to say next and focus more on hanging on their every word and then allow yourself space to respond. Like Silence isn't a bad thing. There's such a thing as, as a pregnant silence, a silence that contains meaning or allows both people to reflect or recalibrate. Mm-hmm. And also it's it's never a bad thing to say, here, give me a second to think about that. That's interesting. Yeah. I think having a moment after someone finishes speaking also gives you a chance to not just have the exact sentence that they said that you can repeat back to them, like you as a kid in school can repeat the sentence back to them, but it allows you to integrate it and like maybe put it in your own words. Or even if you don't go quite that far, the meaning takes a bit more processing time than just the words. And so like taking some space time-wise while people are talking can be really beneficial for helping you to grasp fully what they're saying and to connect with them during a conversation. Mm -hmm. And along the lines of what you're saying, if you don't understand what they're saying, you don't comprehend what they're saying, really good listening strategy is to ask for repetition or paraphrase. It makes people feel more heard because it shows that you care whether or not you're getting the meaning. Um, Or an alternative to asking to repeat themselves is to repeat back what they said in your own words and being like, this is what I'm hearing from you. Is that correct? And then they can alter or suggest like, yes, that was right, except for. Yeah. Restating or summarizing what they're saying can be really useful in in showing that you're mirroring them, that you're, you're following them. Another thing I found, Mark Goulston, who's a hostage negotiator who wrote a book on listening, he recommends questions like, if I were you, I would feel X. Is that true for you? Yeah. Rather than saying, like, I think you want this, or I was in a similar situation and I felt like this. His optimal phrasing is, if I were you, I would think or feel this. Do you feel that way too? Yeah. Makes people feel super listened to. And if they've got hostages, it's it's important. Um <laughs> 
And generally speaking, asking questions is one of the best ways to be a good listener. Rather than introducing new information, asking for further clarification on what they're saying or taking something that's neat uh, that you can probe deeper in, that back and forth rapport process is part of what feeling heard is made out of. It's also good to have tiny encouragements. So when someone's talking, you go, mm-hmm, or, oh, really, or wow, or is that so? Yeah. Or like all the different <laughs> types of little interruptions that don't interrupt the flow of what they're saying, but show that you're on board. Yeah. Um, like I just did there. You hear me? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice. It was so effortlessly making me feel heard. I right. was like, oh, I feel heard. I don't even understand why. <laughs> and then also there's the world of nonverbal communication. So avoiding distractions like your phone or looking at a TV when someone's talking to you. I mean, it, sh it should be obvious, but it's really hard not to do sometimes. And also nonverbal communication and posture. So both your posture should be attentive, facing towards them, have an open posture, make eye contact, be relaxed, but then also their posture. So part of listening is listening with your eyes, noticing if they're comfortable or not, hmm. noticing if something is more or less comfortable for them to say or something they want to be questioned about versus something that they're uncomfortable talking about, this type of stuff. Yeah. So listening extends beyond hearing to other senses as well. One of the main factors involved in all these things is attention, like the body language or paying attention well enough that you can summarize what they said back to them or that you have relevant questions to ask or that you can say, uh-huh, yeah, and not be fake because you're actually <laughs> paying attention to what they're saying. And in order to pay attention to something, you have to care. And so it gets into this realm of values and what's the purpose or the reason of why you're communicating. And I think understanding that can be really helpful for increasing the amount that you care about what someone is saying. Why am I in this conversation? Why is it important that I listen? Defining the goal is useful because knowing why you want to listen is going to help you care enough to actually do it. So besides having the strategies, you need the motivation. And I think the motivation just takes a little bit of thinking about it and figuring out why you care. Or if you don't care, it's also good to know that you don't care. And then maybe you should get out of the conversation or try to change <laughs> the subject or whatever the thing might be. But it's just it's good to be aware of that aspect of it. There was another thing that I stumbled on. They called it communication roadblocks. Even if you're trying to listen, you can accidentally send the signal to someone, the social signal, that you're not really hearing them. They're not really being heard. And of course, the reason we want to be a good listener is because people like good listeners. It's not just about building yourself up either. Aaron's the, best like me. <laughs> Aaron's the best listener in the world. Everyone loves Aaron. And hooray, Aaron gets to put on his little listening man crown and everyone loves him. But mm -hmm. every good, if, if Aaron is a good listener, it means he's going to have a lot of positive interactions in a day and it's going to create happiness around him because people like being listened to. They like being given attention, especially when they have something to say. So it's a net good for society for all of us to strive to be better listeners because we'll actually literally create more happiness and more mental health and more world peace and more world peace. So things that we should avoid doing is a decentralized world peacekeeper trying to listen to the world and listen to the people around us. Why questions make people defensive? Asking why they did something or why someone else did something makes people reach in their brain for causal mechanisms and stuff like that it can disrupt listening. Quick reassurances like, don't worry, relax, or this isn't a big deal, it's nothing like that. Minimizing what they're talking about can make them feel not listened to. Unwelcome advising, where you say you're giving them scholarly advice of, I think the best thing to do in the situation would probably be this. Yeah, it's an impulse a lot of people have is to problem solve rather than, I'm sharing my problems with you. I just want to know that you're hearing me and that you care about my problems. I can probably figure out the solutions on my own. I don't need you to be like oh, this is what you need to do, or this is what you need to do. That just, yeah, makes me feel like you're not, you're not listening to me, or you just want me to stop talking by solving my problem, and now you don't have to listen to me anymore. Yeah, and the extreme version of that, the list calls preaching, which is when you're talking about shoulds, like you should do this, they right, should do right, this, right. that type of stuff. Or being patronizing, like, oh, poor you, that's the worst thing. I've experienced that, like too much <laughs> empathy that feels fake or feels like going through the motions um, or too much probing, asking people questions they don't want to answer, uh, which is why it's important to pay attention to their body language and, and what they want to talk about. What's the emotional purpose of this conversation? And also bad interruptions. So there is such a thing as good interruptions, which I mean, sometimes 
interrupting someone can show that you are listening and that you are you're caring about what they're saying or you're asking a clarifying question or they're rambling for a while and they're losing their their train of conversation then they it's like oh yeah but you were you were saying about the other thing it's like oh yeah yeah right sorry and they get back on track yeah yeah that's a that's a polite interruption that's a really good thing it's showing that you're involved but a bad interruption would be if you change the subject to talk about yourself or change the subject to talk about anything random and shows that you're not invested in the conversation and 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 what they're talking about so yeah, those are communication roadblocks that prevent the social experience of listening from being deeply felt by everyone involved, which should be our goal if we want to create world peace. Yeah, no, definitely. You create little bits of world peace, little bits of utopia every time you listen to people and create real human connections between people, because that's the basis of a world peace, of a utopia, is human connections. Hey, Dad. Yeah, what's up, adult son? I was wondering if we could talk father to son. Cool. Are we going to put the phone down? No? Just one sec. Okay. Uh, I was driving here just now, and I was listening to music. All of a sudden, I just lost hearing in one of my ears. It was weird. It was like a pop almost, and then I just, I can only hear out of one ear. Why do you always drive with music playing? Well, I'm just, like, I lost hearing in one of my ears. I'm just, like, asking for you to care. Yeah, it's probably nothing. Like, sleep, rest it off. Like I mean, hearing will probably come back. Maybe. It's just nothing to worry about. I'm just really scared about it, you know? Oh, I'm like... I'm sorry to hear that. You're well, scared. Yeah, it might not come back. Like, I don't even know what happened. It's like 100% gone. There's nothing. I can barely hear that. It's snapping by my ear. I was going to ask you, actually. What are you feeling for dinner? I'm thinking Chinese. Yeah, sure. Chinese is fine. Do you I mind? just... Because no, I was going to get it. Yeah, that's Do fine. Do you mind if I... I'm, gonna, I'm just ordering it now, but keep talking. Right. Uh, so, anyway, no, I'm just like, it hurts a little bit, and I feel like a little hard piece of something popped out of my ear a few minutes after. I don't know, it was weird. I was driving, but it felt like it. Kung Pao Chicken? Yeah, Kung Pao. Sure. Dad. Ooh, they have this really awesome spinach. Do you remember what dish that is? There's this kick ass spinach that we got? Dad, I don't know. Like, frankly, I'm starting to get insulted. Just don't like, worry your son about your might ears. be deaf in one ear Just forever. Chill. Well, sleep it off, see how you're doing in a little while. If it keeps on going, yeah, maybe go to the doctor. But also, I'll put the ball in your court. You're an adult now. You're my adult son. You live with me and your mother. When we order Kung Pao chicken, we share it with you. You're yes, always thank welcome you for here. the chicken. No, I'm thank not you asking for the roof for, over no, my no, head. No, no, come on, just let me finish. I'm not trying to grill you, son. I'm saying you're always welcome here and we love you. But you're also an adult son. Yes. If you're worried about something medically, you can call 911, you can go to the hospital, the walk-in clinic. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. You're not bleeding out your face, okay? I, I don't know if you're lying to me or what. Or if Why would I be lying to you about I don't know, you're, losing hearing in one of my ears you've and saying you don't give a shit? I'm, it's, it's, and because I'm an adult? Like, there's no logic there. Dead. <laughs> bring Come me on. a diagnosis and I'll get saying. worried. This is what bring I'm always a, talking about. Bring a diagnosis and I'll, I'll be this worried. This is why okay? I see a therapist every week and you pay for it. Uh, do you want fried rice or do you want Yeah, I want fucking uh, fried rice. No, I want fucking fried rice. Okay? okay, you know I want fried rice. I always want fried rice. Well, I'm just <laughs> checking, son. It's, it's actually polite to check. Why would you bring that up now? We were in the middle of a know. real discussion. So that's a I no feel like you're fogging out on me. If I get vermicelli, will you out. have some? I'm trying to have a real discussion with you and you're just in another world. It's, it's, it's what's always going on. It's like a nightmare. It's an absolute um, fucking nightmare. How do you feel about vegetable rolls? How can you keep doing this? How can you just keep ignoring just, what I'm saying I just to you? Want to wrap up this, I just want to wrap up this, this order. This is insane. This is literally insane. Okay, I'm getting vegetable rolls, but you have to eat one of them. <sighs> you got to eat some of these vegetable rolls. still talking about the vegetable rolls. He's still talking I about I have them. to announce I'm ordering the vegetable rolls, but you got to <sighs> okay, eat some. Okay, vegetable rolls are great. Just order whatever you, the fuck you want. I don't care. Some? Please stop talking about it. I don't want there it. to be please leftover please vegetable rolls. Please stop talking about it. Please. Just please stop vegetable rolls in the cart and that's that's over it's over okay so we can talk about the problem of you not listening to me well you don't have cancer you're fucking deaf in one who gives a shit it's one ear who gives a shit Uh, now do you want ginger beef or not so another obvious question that we need to tackle here on the ear spectrum yeah when people bring up ear questions this is one of the main ones what makes an ear beautiful 
Yeah. And I think the obvious answer is it's jewelry. It's it's piercing. It's if you want your house to be beautiful, you decorate it, you put up pictures, you paint the walls, you do things. The way people decorate their ears is with piercings. Mm -hmm. And we've been piercing ears for a really long time. Our earliest recorded ear piercing that we have is Oatsy the Iceman who was a, a corpse, frozen corpse found um, <laughs> in Scandinavia, who was a corpse. He was a corpse. <laughs> uh, but that frozen corpse is 5,300 years old. I mean, he had pierced ears. If you're going to jam something through your skin and hang it off your body, the ear is like a very obvious place. The nose, I think, is also fairly obvious, but a bit more painful, probably. Yeah. The lobe is like, it's just a little dangly, wobble weirdo. Yeah, I didn't take the time I would have liked to look into all piercings, but I, I seem to remember that ear piercings are the oldest and nose piercings are the second oldest. Yeah, it makes sense tell. to me. And belly button piercings are newer than nipple piercings. Um, <laughs> and also, I think actually genital piercings are older than belly button piercings. Earrings are actually even mentioned multiple times in the Bible, which is weird. I guess if you're reading the Bible, you'd be like, oh, mentioning earrings, of course, the same way that you'd mention houses or whatever. Right, right, right. But then you think of it as like, shit, they mentioned earrings in the Bible like it wasn't no thing. Like yeah. earrings had just been around. There's the different kinds too, like, you know, little studs, there's hoops, there's danglies, there's the spacers. Uh, uh, you can like actually have a space so you can put a big plug in it. Or like the barbell that goes through do two different parts of your yeah, ear. Yeah. Interestingly, in one of the most prominent and famous portraits of Shakespeare called the Chandos portrait, Shakespeare has an ear piercing. Also, besides like- One just of the greatest poets. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just decorating your ears. People have aesthetic preferences about ears. I was Googling what makes an ear beautiful. I stumbled upon a plastic surgery website and they were describing some of the things that they might do to make your ear more beautiful. So <laughs> this says, the, the beautiful ear has a natural look to it. The curves are graceful and gentle. The ear should not dominate the frontal profile and the ear shape should complement the shape of the head. So by dominate the frontal profile, what they're saying is they shouldn't stick out too far. Like if your ears stick out too much, then you notice the ears too much. They're not complementing complementing the shape of your head. Mm -hmm. So the, the projection of the different parts of the ears should blend nicely. I've noticed that the bottom half of my ear is bigger than the top half of my ear. So maybe they don't blend perfectly. That might be a little bit of an ear deformity on my part. Well, I mean, they'll certainly make the argument it is if they're trying to sell you some plastic surgery, but I think that your ears look natural. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Natural beauty. <laughs> and I think from the front, they're not distracting at all. They're very complimentary. So yeah, just the folds and contours should be natural and pleasing to the eye. The rim of the ear should have a gentle curve and not have any sharp bends. They say those, those don't look natural, which is an odd phrase, natural looking when the sharp bends are what was actually natural and you're making them <laughs> into these smooth, perfect things with surgery. But anyway, th those are some of the basic guidelines for just a beautiful ear, according to one plastic surgery website. Did that, did that plastic at. surgery website take a stance on the dangling lobe versus webbed lobe? No, I didn't see that. No. <laughs> Do you have a strong preference for dangling versus non-dangling? Um, no, no, yeah, not at yeah, all. I don't I, think so either. I've, I've spent very little thought on the aesthetics of the ear. Yeah, you have very nice ears. Oh, I think, thank you very I think much. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> and just like very quick ear maintenance. You know, you don't have to do a lot with your ears. Earwax actually comes out on its own if you have too much of it. So if you're using Q-tips, you should only be using them in the very, very outer part of your ear and not sticking them into the ear canal at all. Because what that does is actually push earwax further into your ear and can lead to compacted earwax, which can cause uh, hearing loss. It's actually happened to me once. I started experiencing some hearing loss and I was trying to dig earwax out and I ended up making it worse and ended up having to go to a doctor where they shot warm water into my ear with a little high pressure jet and like the earwax eventually plopped out. Well, why didn't you get it candled? Because uh, <laughs> ear candles actually don't work. Uh, the wax that it looks like is building up in there is just the wax of the candle <laughs> itself. Yeah. Uh, also, I read some, because um, I had seen in the notes you passed to me that ear candling doesn't work and is dangerous yeah and that no one should do it and it's it's uh it's not <laughs> well, yeah, it's actually illegal in canada and the u.s to do it oh is it or to sell it yeah oh, to sell it uh. to sell ear candles huh. although in canada they sell ear candles and put on the package for entertainment purposes only <laughs> oh, okay because uh, i was gonna say i know like people who've bought them and not 
that far in the past, but okay, that makes yeah, sense. But that's actually, even the four entertainment purposes only ones are technically illegal because Health Canada doesn't recognize any entertainment purpose for your <laughs> candles. <laughs> One of the reasons they're dangerous is that like hot burning, dripping wax can actually fall <laughs> onto your skin and burn you <laughs> while yeah. you're using them. No, I read some um, anecdotes of people who had experienced that like right. the burning on the inside of the ear oh yeah or, you're falling into your ear yeah right. yeah Fuck. or getting wax on the eardrum causing permanent damage shit yeah so yeah ear candling is bullshit yeah if you do feel like you have too much earwax in your ears and it's not coming out the only thing you can really do at home is in the shower gently let warm water spray into your ear and flow out that's something you can do uh, that doesn't compact the wax further and has no chance of burning you but you want to be careful of like if it was an extremely high pressure spray spraying that directly into your ear can damage the eardrum so be gentle and careful don't spray high pressure water in your ear all the time no i i, I know i'm not supposed to use q-tips and i don't really like i don't use them use them yeah but like when you put a q-tip in there and like kind of roll it around on the inside of the ear oh, canal. Oh, and like, I hate that. I, oh, honestly, I hate it. It feels so good. <laughs> it feels really nice. It's like a little massage on the inside of your head. It's too dry for me. This is my experience of it is it's dry and it's like the feeling of like, I don't know, like rubbing paper against your skin or something. Something it doesn't, I, I don't like, I've never liked Q-tips. I find it kind of like relaxing and nice. Yeah. But I don't go deep. Don't worry, doctors. <laughs> Ear doctors listening, I don't go too deep. Sean doesn't go deep. <laughs> Today on Confirmation Bias News from the Sun. Hard to swallow. Mutant sheep discovered with a mouth growing inside its ear. A mutant sheep has stunned experts after a mouth was found inside its ear, complete with teeth, saliva, and a swallow reflex. Ali Duman was shearing sheep at his farm in Turkey when he made the shocking discovery. He said, I started trimming the sheep and thought I accidentally had cut the ear of the sheep. However, when I checked the ear closely, I realized it was a mouth. I was very scared. I started shaking. The veterinarian who examined the sheep said, This is the first time I've seen such a case. The animal produces spit from here. It gulps and has teeth in the mouth. It has a serious spit secretion. However, I don't think it can eat anything with that mouth. We were excited to see it, but the owner was scared. It's not a good situation. Precise reasons behind such mutations are still unclear, but hereditary defects, poisoning, nutritional issues, or infectious agents can cause deformities in animals. When you first told me about this, my immediate question was, where would something go if it swallowed it? Because if it has a swallow reflex, like how far down does it go? Yeah, does where it, does it go into the body? Is it like, is would there it a just little like sack stop? down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or does it just reach an end where whatever it swallows is just going to build up in some sort of yeah, yeah. creepy flesh tube? Or may, maybe it would like cough it out or something. The ear could vomit out whatever it ate. <laughs> yeah, like how earwax just comes out on its own when there's too much of it. If there was too much of this, I don't know. It's really creepy. And the video is very creepy. Yeah, check, you, out, check out the video. Viewers at home, we just watched it here. And it's uh, it's very gross and weird to see two tiny teeth in an ear that is spitting at yeah. the bottom. of it's, But it's so close up that you don't really get the full context like yeah, when you're looking at it. But it, it's just it, it, still one of the grossest. This is why I advocate for clear boundaries between mouths and ears. And ears should be ears and mouths should be mouths and mixing them up is just not what god intended yeah i'm behind you on that 100 percent. this is is an area i'm very conservative this goat has a demon in it i wonder what it feels like to the goat yeah oh yeah yeah that's <sighs> <laughs> I, wonder, I mean it probably doesn't hurt or anything it probably just feels like kind of like your mouth feels but kind of over by your ear but like a second mouth you can kind of imagine it also it's the only way it's ever known you know it's not like yeah yeah it yeah, was yeah. raised without a mouth and then suddenly had the feeling of like whoa there's a mouth in my ear yeah like it's, it's just, not like how it would feel to us if we somehow grew a mouth in our ear or if we morphed into this particular goat and could have its experience this is making me hyper conscious of like the tube that connects my ear to my throat when i try to think about it what it would feel like we're gonna file that one under yikes folks <laughs> <laughs> today's episode of seriously wrong is proudly brought to you by the ear lend me your ear for a second or if you've got something to say i'm all ears 
I've had my ear to the ground on this issue for a while, and I've just been trying to play it by ear. I kind of have an ear for it. Uh, my sister, she's got a tin ear. A lot of people, I try to tell them this, and it's just in one ear and out the other. And it's like, hey, can you just let me bend your ear for a second? We're here trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. The Ear, proud sponsor. The last thing I wanted to touch on is just kind of thinking about how we always exist in a world of sound. Like we think often about the landscape around us and we talk about how landscapes have been altering and shifting and changing with cities and skyscrapers and human intervention. But I think we think a little bit less about how the soundscape is changing. But if you imagine what it was like to be one of these pre-mammalian fish things <laughs> Sean was talking about and what that would hear underwater, like totally different from what like a prehistoric human in a hunter gatherer tribe would typically hear. They would hear the sounds of the forests, the rustling of the trees, the gurgling of the brook. Moving forward in time, you might be living in a city and hearing the sounds of clopping horse hooves. And then you move into more modern cities and you have cars everywhere going into a store. There's music playing. The universe in which we all exist has shifted completely in especially the last few hundred years, ever since the Industrial Revolution. And especially especially with headphones, which we already mentioned, like headphones can cause hearing loss. But it's also this really unique thing where now you have people walking around in the same space, but experiencing completely different soundscapes from each other. And it's really cool that you have this ability to customize your soundscape into like the, that freedom, that option. To Instead of ch- hearing mall music, you're listening to the wrong boys get to the bottom of things. Yeah, exactly. But it's also like a kind of loss of connection between people this communal aspect of sharing a soundscape with the people who are in close proximity to you is altered in really fundamental ways. Which, I mean, it's a good thing in the sense that our tastes and music and podcasts and ASMR or whatever other things people might be Mm -hmm. listening to on the bus might be different from each other and we can give them space to be divergent where I'd listen to music that other people on the bus would never want to listen to. But then it's also kind of sad in the sense that the soundscape that we're in while it still is by default a shared experience, it's increasingly atomized. Exactly. It's actually an interesting thing, like how little we pay attention sometimes to the soundscape around us. Like if you're outside right now, somewhere listening to us on your headphones, just pause it for a second and like listen to what you're not listening to. Like hear the sounds around you right now. Just interesting to note what you're not paying attention to when you are paying attention to us. And then turn us back on. Like, definitely keep listen to the rest of the episode. But should have told them that before they turned it off. <laughs> no shit. Now it's pause and they can't hear us anymore. And they're like <laughs> awaiting further instructions. <laughs> or they're just like they were right. I never <laughs> noticed how the sound of the wind rustling through the two houses beside me. Oh, there's a bird sound. Like, oh, it's so wow. fascinating. This world is it's so much more beautiful out, out, yeah. <laughs> outside the headphones. I've been sequestering myself away into this um, tiny corner of political ideology. And yeah, things. I'm never listening to Seriously Wrong again. I'm, yeah, throwing, I'm just throwing fully, away my I'm phone. a bird listener now. Yeah. My favorite podcast <laughs> is The Natural Sound of Birds. <laughs> yeah, no, that it, it is interesting to think about. There's sounds I hear every day that would scare the shit out of my ancestors if they heard them one time, if they were like new to them. Like oh, the yeah, sound right. of the SkyTrain, like the Vancouver subway line going by and can be pretty loud. Or like when you're on the SkyTrain, sometimes yeah, it's, it's kind of definitely and loud. Weird. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, one guy I was uh, listening to a TED talk by had a phrase for the experience of the sounds that you're hearing not matching the world around you, and it's just a cool word. It's schizophonia. Uh, so there's a disconnect between, like, say, you're hearing our voices and you're in a park and there's people laughing, playing kickball and like birds in the trees. But you're not hearing that. You're hearing our voice. That's schizophonia. It's a disconnect. It's it's unique to the modern age and is interesting for that reason. That doctor that I mentioned at the beginning had the four levels of hearing and described uh, a full amount of hearing as a sense of oneness with an active environment around you. I guess that's that's kind of lost in the schizophrenia scenario i don't know i'm actually not that worried about it i think it's pretty cool no yeah i'm not worried at all yeah so what have we learned today ears are gills you can't breathe through that have 
tiny bits of jawbone in them. You've got a little spiral sack full of liquid and hair that all of your vibration sounds go through. I'm wondering if it's one of those golden ratio spirals, at least on average, and then also like the vibrations moving through the golden ratio spiral. I don't know. <laughs> Just had a DMT moment or something. <laughs> yeah, so we learned ears are sacred, golden ratio spiraled, vibration catching mm -hmm. machinery. Uh, we've learned that earrings go back in human history about as far as we can measure. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a lot of human culture around piercing the dangly bit of your ear and putting some form of jewelry or another through it. We learned that uh, hearing loss is inevitable as we age, but there are things that we can do to avoid it or minimize it. And there is actually an increase in hearing loss in the modern world because of things like headphones and other loud sounds that uh, wouldn't happen in a, in a non-industrial environment that lacks the artifice of modern society. And we learned if you're negotiating with a hostage taker, you should ask questions like, if I were you, I would feel X. Is that true for you? So for example, I would say, if I were you, I would hope that my demands are met so I could free the hostages and I could escape. Is that true for you? And then the hostage taker's like, oh, I feel so heard right now. Like yeah. this negotiator is really and, and on my I'm side. Just hostage situation. Like for example, like right now, um, if I'm hearing you, the listener correctly, you're saying that you thought this was a great episode and that you learned a lot about the ear. And I would say, wow, that's great. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> We now return to the wrong boy's deep and incompetent Jeffrey's ear, building a society to the best of their abilities. Hey, Sean, do you know what day it is today? Uh, do you know I, what I don't day know. It is I don't know. Today? What is it? You haven't been looking at the calendar, have you? It's the 10 year anniversary of the day we got sucked into Jeffrey's ear and started this great new society. I got a cake. There's going to be a whole celebration. Yeah, yeah, great. It's awesome. I'm into it. I'm into it. Actually, maybe for the anniversary, like as a gift or something that we could do together as a family. Yeah. My crying room still super small and uncomfortable. It's been 10 years. We've been talking about building a bigger crying room for oh, me yeah, for a long time. Yeah, someday, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's do it. Let's get started. Well, uh, I mean, uh, there's a lot going it's on right now. It's been 10 years. It, yeah. has, it has been 10 years, but I mean, we've accomplished a lot. we got a garden, electricity. It's uh, an impressive spiral staircase, and this is larger than any house I could ever afford outside the year. We also have a calendar that I make every year, our calendar together with pictures of us. And on this calendar, I had this date marked. So the fact that you didn't know about it and aren't excited about it is kind of upsetting to well, me uh, you're upset about the crying room again uh, it's I, I really have one request I, maybe if you could just stop crying you think i like not being strong for you <laughs> that's why we need a bigger room Ugh. you know you're not even using the room that exists right now <laughs> you have too a room small aaron if you don't want to get in the crying room what if we just hop on our bikes and sightsee a little bit we'll head over to the tympanic cavity we'll you know look around look at the cochlea watch the ossicles do their thing yeah, yeah, let's do it. I'm sorry for crying for like 10 years. Is that is that the magic chime? Do you hear that? Uh, it's something. I hear something. I don't know if it's the magic chime. That sounds like the magic chime. I don't think it's the magic chime. Oh my God, we're getting out. We. What the fuck, Jeffrey? Oh my God. Jeffrey, you hit the button now after 10 years. 10 fucking years later. After 10 years. This is what unbelievable. What do you mean it hasn't been 10 years? It has you been 10 years. Look at me. I have a sack of shit, my Jeffrey. Hair is gray. You fucking ruined my life. I've been eating your fucking earwax for 10 years. And you I gotta say, Jeffrey, it's, it's not that bad. But Sean has a point, and oh. I have a bone to pick with you as well because we asked you to hit the button within five minutes after we went in there, and it's been 10 years. Years. 10 years, Jeffrey. And you know what? You never hit the fucking theme song button. It's been like three or four times, something like that. It's fucked, Jeffrey. You're a shitty That's intern. What, it is. what do you have to intern. say for yourself, Jeffrey? What the fuck do you have to say for yourself? Well, for your information, you have been inside my ear for precisely five minutes. Thank you very much. Perhaps because the wrong boy's learning machine shrinks your cells down to a smaller size, some quantum weirdness is happening and you've experienced time slower than I have. But on Jeffrey's watch, it's been exactly five minutes. Thank you very much. On the subject of the theme song, I'll have you know... That you did not say please or thank you to Jeffrey even once. Even fucking once. Now, I'm an unpaid intern. 
I come here out of the goodness of my heart to help you out and make a good show. I do all I can for you, and it means a great deal to me. However, you've treated me so poorly, wrong boys, that I'm going to be leaving now and forever. I've done everything I can for you and everything I want to do for you, and frankly... You've treated me with nothing but disrespect and contempt. Now, if you've been living 10 years in my ear, eating my earwax, I am sorry. But you should have looked ahead to that. It's not up to the damn intern to figure these things out. I followed your directions exactly. You've made your bed and now you will sleep in it. And know what? Actually, I direct this entirely at Sean. Aaron, you've been nothing but gracious to me, and I heard you speaking ill of your own ears earlier, and and frankly, it makes me upset to think that such a beautiful soul as you would be so disrespectful to yourself. But Sean, I have nothing but contempt for you. You are ugly in spirit. I want nothing but the worst for you. Goodbye. Wow. Fucking weird. weird. <laughs> I mean, uh, all he had to do is hit the button. Uh, try not waiting 10 years. <laughs> bye bye, Jeffrey. Yeah, it's like, can't we can get another intern? Or I can just play the theme I song myself. Didn't say thank you or whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's just yelling at us and yelling and going on and on. And I mean, I'm glad he thinks I'm a beautiful soul, but I don't think he was being fair to you. I mean, you do cry a lot and like that was annoying, but that's not a problem anymore. Yeah, we're regular size. No reason yeah. to cry. I'll just go back to being strong for you and strong for everyone. This is dope. I'm gonna head back to life. It, although it is weird being physically 10 years older than I am yeah. legally, you know, yeah, that's or in people's really minds. Yeah. Well, just losing 10 years of my life like that. Like, fuck Jeffrey. Well, I wouldn't say we lost the 10 years. It was a beautiful experience we shared together and like shaped us both forever, mm, I would yeah. say. Yeah. I guess I did learn the depths of hopelessness and what well, that feels like. Well, not crying is going to be weird. Hmm. Oh, well. Things move on. Life goes on. So this has been the Seriously Wrong Podcast. It's a weekly podcast about uh, all sorts of things, uh, but especially ears. It's, it's, it's really one of our passions on the <laughs> yeah, show, Yeah, the ear. If you like what we're doing here and you want to support us, I strongly recommend that you uh, become a Patreon subscriber or uh, become a reoccurring donor on PayPal. It makes a huge difference to us in how much time we're able to put in the show. We've got more ideas for episodes than we could ever do, more interviews than we could ever actually line up with the amount of time that we have. But the more donors we get, the closer we get to that sacred uh, goal of producing as much content as I want to in my heart and I have ideas for and I think about that I'm just unable to deliver on (laughs) on a weekly schedule while working full time. So please do. It makes a big difference to us. Thank you so much to the people who already donate. And if you have any feedback on this episode, we love hearing your feedback. Uh, Go to our website. There's a contact form and a voicemail machine. And we love hearing from you. And thanks for listening. Just one last thing, everyone. So when I was editing this episode and I was listening to myself saying, oh, I thought I had ugly ears. I thought I had terrible ears. It was weird. I got up, I went, I walked over, I looked in the mirror and I said, my ears are beautiful. And I really believed it. And like, I looked at them and I saw what was beautiful about them. And, you know, I was just, it was so crazy of me to ever think, oh, my ears are ugly because they're unique and individual to me and uh, make me who I am. It's, I uh, can't believe I ever used to think like that. And now that I don't, my life has gotten so much better. It's turned completely around. I was on the downslope before and now I'm on the upslope and I'm just here to say to you, to everyone listening out there, all ears are beautiful. You know, whether they have shapely curves or jagged marks or how well they complement the shape of your face, it doesn't matter. They're, they're yours and you should love them because they love you. And that's, I don't know, I just had to add that in. I needed to say that. Next time on Seriously Wrong, send your adult children to bed early, because this week, it's parents only.